Prior to 2010, the market in Detroit was really quite bad. From 1993 to 2003, just looking at the downtown, we added zero new units of housing. It's really difficult to get the kinds of amenities in terms of grocery stores, in terms of restaurants, without having that population density. Yeah, well, so CDFIs, you know, are almost um, kind of a counter-market uh, concept. You know, when everybody's running out of the fire, we're running in. But the conventional banks aren't always the first ones in. They really need to see that um, there's additional activity taking place. So for a community development financial institution, it's not simply about lending money. It's understanding what impact, what contribution will that project bring to communities, in many cases, that have been locked in systematic poverty. The Detroit Future City strategic framework imagined a future for Detroit that was a connected Detroit. You can't just renovate, you know, a strip center and expect everyone to come. you got to create a community. So if you think about this uh, as an opportunity to get everybody concentrated on a particular area, that then in turn led to much larger plans. Everyone sort of rallied together along the corridor. The CDFIs, National and Local, have all adopted this really collaborative sort of way of working together. Taking on a uh, you know, critically important intersection, say Cass and Canfield. We looked at what do we do with large scale buildings that are vacant? Uh, what do we do with the streetscape environment, the public space environment? Cleaning up vacant lots, building pocket parks, um, activating spaces. This was placemaking before it actually became a catchphrase. When you put all of that together, all of the sectors firing on all cylinders, it creates a sort of an aggregate energy that I think is unmistakable. Brand new apartments opening up in Detroit's booming Midtown District. And the best news is it is not just apartments. There's also newly renovated retail space, and this project is the first of many more to come. If you actually look at the investments that have been done and you do a heat map and plot them out, you see a, a thin band down the Woodward Corridor. You see as a heat map that heat grows outside. So if we look at the Rainer Court transaction, you know, we're west of Cass at this point. Um, you know, three or four years ago, west of Cass was unthinkable. Today, we've got a fully leased project. And not only do we have a fully leased project that's west of Cass, the development wasn't done by someone in the city of Detroit who knows the neighborhood has been there forever and sort of could recognize the opportunity. It was done by a family-owned shop out of Lansing who had never done a deal in Detroit. They saw the opportunity, right? So when the outside market validates the work that's been done, we have a chance to actually do something bigger and faster than we've ever done it before. What we're doing now is actually taking uh, the tools that we've assembled specifically for the corridor and moving those to the neighborhoods. You know, there is no cookie cutter like we're going to take this, but there's certainly programs we run that could be easily exported. And there's certainly real estate fundamentals that can be easily exported. This is not about fixing neighborhoods. This is about elevating the components that have made those neighborhoods special or, or are making them special today. I will tell you, this is probably wave 1.5. It's not even wave 2.0 yet. Greenways, really significant adaptive reuse of entire parcels of land. And if we can do it right and engage everybody, I, I just think we could do something exceptional here. Uh, we can make the business case on, oh, we can provide this tax incentive, we can give you this break on uh, a building, et cetera, et cetera. That is not what closes the deal. What closes the deal is when the corporate uh, CEO comes and his or her spouse looks around and says, I can live here. I love doing what I do because we invest in both place where people live and people themselves. You know, we see success stories all around us. Take a guy named Devon Yancey, who's a young African-American man who's unsure of his future until he entered the Henry Ford Academy. Now he's in the College for Creative Studies at the Taubman Center and has a promising future in design. What the CDFIs in this town have done 
have actually brought about redevelopment at rates I never thought I'd see. There are just tons of people coming um, at this problem from all different backgrounds. We are structuring deals every month that involves new partners, new people in the mix. We financed over $100 million worth of projects and we have a pipeline of $60 million more. Detroit's ready for investment. Detroit's open for business. Detroit's a place of opportunity. And oh, by the way, if you wait too long, you're going to miss out.